Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and a uh, couple of videos ago I talked about how I started using these new home sensor boards and how I'm starting to configure them for my holiday home automation and in that video I also mentioned that I kept using ESP home even though I'm not planning to use home assistant anymore so the or the current setup now is that uh, I'm going to have a Raspberry Pi running Node-RED and an MQTT broker and then I would have these boards around the home and these would be the sensors and well, actuators using these relays. And today I'm going to talk about how you can uh, set this up, how well, specifically how you can set up ESP Home in a laptop and how you can do the programming of these boards using the laptop without using any home assistant. So if you just want Node-RED or basically anything else with you, which uses MQTT, then that, this is how you, how you can do that. So first of all, we need a few different applications to install. The ESP Home is running in Python. So first of all, we need to download Python. And um, I mean, this is a fairly simple thing, especially on the Windows. You just go to python.org and you download the latest Python version. And this is just a normal Windows installation. You just have to follow through the installation process you know, click next, 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 next. Um, I think I have selected the custom installation and there was specifically one place where it says whether it should add the Python environment variables to Windows. I'm pretty sure that even the standard installation would do that, but that's, I think that's uh, something which is required. So once you do that, it is a fairly simple process. You don't even have to restart your computer. Then, um, with the Python, the pip is going to be installed. So this is the, I think, Python um, package manager. Well, probably it's called something else, but this is like the, the NPM that we use in uh, JavaScript and Node, well, Node.js. So this is the Python package manager or the installation manager. Because uh, next, what we need to do is we need to set up ESP Home and Again, you just open a, a Windows command prompt and you just type PIP3 install ESP Home and that will install P uh, ESP Home. So it's going to be sort of like the similar project how you install an application using apt-get in a Raspberry Pi. So it's going to go through some stuff and, it, and you know, on a normal Windows laptop, it's probably going to take less than a minute to install. And once you have done that, you are pretty much ready to go. And with this, basically ESP Home is installed. So now you can create your YAML file and you can start compiling the binaries for your ESP. And you can do this in two separate ways. Uh, you can use the ESP Home wizard, which is going to create you a basic YAML configuration file. Uh, basically, if, if I start ESP Home wizard, uh, by the way, uh, what I do is I start uh, this command prompt in a folder where I want to store my ESP home, you know, YAML file. So maybe you can create a project file or something like that. But if I start the ESP home wizard, so ESP home uh, space wizard and space, you have to obviously create a YAML file uh, or a YAML file name. So test on YAML is going to go through a series of questions. As you can see here, you know, welcome to ESP Home and it's going to guide you a couple of uh, uh, basic steps. And the first one is you have to give a name to your node. Um, uh, let's say this is going to be my test sensor. And so now it's called the test sensor. I now I have to specify whether this is an ESP 8266 a266 or ESP32 based one. So uh, it's a, a, a ESP8266. So that's the platform. And yeah, what is your board type? Uh, well, I'm using the D1 um, Mini, VMOS D1 Mini, so just D1 Mini. And now you need to provide your uh, Wi Fi SSID and the password. So I'm just going to type test test. 
And also you can provide uh, a password for the OTA, so the over the update. I'm just going to put test as well. And now it says your test configuration file is created. So now we can see how that looks like. So now the test YAML has been created and that's how your ESP YAML file looks like. So this is a, sim a simple skeleton uh, file. I mean, you can use this and build from here, or if you want to use my example, well, you can just download my examples anyway, and then make changes to here. And what I'm going to be showing in these particular videos, well, not in this one, but some of the following videos, is uh, how you can convert, uh, sorry, how you can, uh, you know, use these files if you are using MQTT. But if you are using a home assistant, but you still want the same type of sensors, then your YAML file is going to be almost the same. The only thing I have done is I deleted this section, the API section. This API section is required for Home Assistant, but if you are using MQTT, you should be removing that. So I, in all my YAML files, these three lines are going to be removed. If you want to convert it back to uh, Home Assistant, you need to add them back here. And of course, once I go, to, go through my YAML files, um, uh, it will, all of them would have a, an MQTT section. Obviously, you, you don't need to do that. Or you, uh, sorry, for Home Assistant, you don't need MQTT, so you can delete that. And uh, there is going to be some sections here which says state topic. So this is where I specify what the topic should be. So for example, this one is, uh, no, let me pick another one. So let's say this is the BME 680. If I don't specify the state topic, the ESP Home is going to define a specific MQTT topic, but I wanted something different, so I did that. And uh, so again, for a Home Assistant, you can delete the whole MQTT section and also these state underscore topic lines. And as you can see, the, the only difference on the top is that I don't have the API section. So I just have the logger, OTA and Wi-Fi. So logger, uh, OTA and Wi-Fi without the API section. A couple of other things which I learned also in a way we, which I think it's quite useful. And of course that would apply if you're using Home Assistant as well. Or maybe I should do this one. So the uh, <clears throat> picture is not in the way. Is you can have, um, as you can see, I don't have any passwords stored here. So anytime I want to use passwords, I'm just using um, question mark, not question mark, quotation, uh, not quotation, what is exclamation mark secret and then uh, something. And these are because you can create a secrets.yaml uh, in the same directory where you have all your other YAML files and you can uh, configure all your passwords here. And the good thing about this, well, first of all, for me, that I don't have to blank out all these lines in the videos. I just have to blank out this screen. But the other advantage is that all the YAML files are going to use these secret YAML. So you just have to specify your passwords once, and then all of your ESP Home configurations are going to use those. So every time I'm using secret, this OTA password or Wi-Fi underscore SSID is configured here and that's where it is um, uh, specified, the actual value. I also started using these substitutions because, well, first of all, each device needs to have a device name. And I created this substitution, which is called the device name, and that's the actual device name, like living room or for the fan. And then whenever I want to use this, I just... Uh, reference the substitution using dollar sign and then the device name or this one. So as you can see, I'm using it in the name of the ESP home device, the client ID for the MQTT, and also as the first part of the MQTT topic. So this is just one way of making your life easier and not, uh, you know, especially if you are using copy and paste a lot, because then you will probably forget to you know, change the MQTT at, at one point. I don't want to go into the details because I want to cover these various YAML files in a separate video. So um, now this is how you build your YAML file. And by the way, again, you can use the wizard to build up the set skeleton, and then you just have to use a text editor to edit the rest of the YAML file. By the way, I'm using a program which is called the Sublime Text Editor. 
this is free uh, or you can well you can use it as an unregistered copy the one thing i like about it it seems to know about this yaml uh, syntax highlighting so you know it looks quite nice it's easy to read definitely better than notepad but you can use notepad as well and once you have done with all the configuration or you if you want to test it then you come back to your command prompt uh, to the you know the folder where your yaml files in and then you can just do esp home run and uh, you can specify the yaml file so let's say fan.yaml and now your laptop is going to uh, compile the binary or compile the firmware for your uh, esp so and then once the firmware compilation is done uh, because i haven't really made a lot of changes it was really quick sometimes it may take a minute or two to do this so now the um, this gives me an option to do the update and i'm talking about this fan device and as you can see it is connected to my laptop directly using the usb and i know it is uh, com6 so this is option two so i can just do that and now it is going to update the firmware so it is pretty much similar how we could do the you know the update in the home assistant app but that's it the firmware is updated so it is really easy and really easy even you know just using standard windows commands and using the esp home executable so now it's running and if you just keep this running then it's going to show the logs here but if you want to use the logs then um, you can also you know load the sorry this one the website and it shows the logs here as well so that's one option that you can do um, and let's say that your device your esp is no longer connected to the laptop but still we can use over the air update and then probably even if i scroll up here you could probably see an option which says over the air update fan.local and i have to admit i don't know whether this is related to my router or the way my local network is set up but i can't use mdns so if i type uh, you know fan.local into my browser it won't be able to find so i can only find these devices using ip so uh, this over the update never works for me and this could be done to my local network i'm not really sure but what happens if your device is no longer connected as i said maybe it's already deployed it's connected to the mains power or you know this external power supply in in my case you can still do the update so esp home run li so the other one is called living room okay yeah yaml and you can do slash device and then just provide the ip of the device so 192.168.1. dot so the living room is 181 um yep and enter so that's still going to compile the binary and uh, again i haven't made a lot of changes so it's going to be very quick it's building the release um and okay it's doing a few more other things compiling and now you can see the over the air update so as long as you know the ip of, of the device which i mean it should be easy to find now you can do the update and now my device is running and I think if this updates, we will be able to see that probably the uptime resets because uh, the device got reset as well. Maybe if I scroll all the way down, ah, let me just refresh. Yeah, so the uptime is zero minutes because it just got rebooted. And the radar sensor is working. It's standing on off status here because I'm moving around. So that's how easy it is to use ESP Home on a Windows computer without using Home Assistant, which I'm quite happy about because up until now I was hesitant between ESP Easy and also Tasmota. I'm not really a fan of Tasmota. ESP Easy I like a little bit better because of the, the user interface, but I think probably this is going to be my new favorite ESP Home, especially if um, it has a lot more device support than ESP Easy, that's for sure. 
So a lot of different these sensors are supported in ESP Home than ESP Easy. So that's definitely one advantage. And by the way, I've done a separate video on the on these firmware, so Tasmota ESP Easy and ESP Home. If you are not sure about them, you can probably watch that as well. But I think that will be all for today. As I said in the previous video, I'm planning to cover these boards, like this board and that board, in a separate video. And in those videos, I'm going to go into the uh, details of the YAML file. You know, why does it look like that? How I build that? If you want to do, uh, work, it's, it's slightly different how you can make changes. So if you are interested in those kind of details, just make sure that you are subscribed so you will get the notification about the new videos. But I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.